Lord of Lords. Still in the mood of appreciating his holy name, calling his presence down here into our midst this evening. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the Let your glory be above all the whole oh, let your glory let your Oh, Lord. 
Jesus you are El Shaddai you are Elohim your name is Yahweh Lord we lift your eye tonight we exalt you above every issue in our life we exalt you above our nation Lord, we say be glorified. Be glorified in this place. Be glorified in our lives. Jesus, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way tonight. Let the influence of your spirit Feel every heart. Bring understanding. Bring insight. Bring transformation. I ask Lord that you speak through my lips. Let someone receive an encounter with your spirit, Holy Ghost. Well, thank you, Father. Let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. You may have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to thank our Father and the Lord 
his wife and the leadership council for the opportunity once again to bring God's word away. I am persuaded that God has a word for someone in this place tonight in the name of Jesus. If you've come to meet with Jesus, you won't be disappointed. But if you came to see man, you will be disappointed. Hallelujah. So the choice is yours. Whenever we are privileged to be in God's presence, to receive of him, we must understand that we have come to meet with Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quickly, I'd like us to open our Bible to Romans chapter 8, 4. Very familiar place. We're going to do some readings tonight. Romans chapter 4. I want to read from verse 16. I'm reading with the amplified version. Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace or merited favor to make it stable and valid and guaranteed to all his descendants not only to the devotees and adherents of the law but also to those who share the faith of abraham who is thus the father of us all as it is written I've made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. Who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised. As if they already existed. For Abraham, human, for for Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations, as he had been promised. So numberless shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotence of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's dead in womb. No unbelief or distrust made him weaver, doubtingly questioned concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. Fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised promise that is why his faith was credited to him as righteousness right standing with god but the words it was credited to him we are written not for his sake alone but they were written for our sakes too righteousness standing acceptable to god will be granted and credited to us also who believe in trust in adhere to and rely on god who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Genesis 15. Afterward, the Lord, from verse 1, after, reading with NLT, afterward, the Lord spoke to Abraham in a vision and said, Do not be afraid, Abraham, for I will protect you, and your reward will be great. But Abraham replied, O sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? 
since I don't have a son, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. You have given me no children, so no one of my servants will have, so one of my servants will have to be my heir. Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own to inherit the everything I am giving you. Then the Lord brought Abraham outside beneath the ninth sky and told him, Look up into the heavens and count the stars if you can. Your descendants will be like that. Too many to count. And Abraham believed the Lord. And the Lord declared him righteous because of his faith. Then the Lord told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of all of the gardens to give you this land. But Abraham replied, O oh, sovereign Lord, how can I be sure that you will give it to me? Hallelujah. Genesis 12. So let's say, have a long reading. From verse 1. Then the Lord told Abraham, I leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed him. Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Aram. He took his wife Sarah and his nephew Lot. And all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people who had joined his household at Aaron, and finally arrived in Canaan. Traveling through Canaan, they came to a place near Shechem and set up camp before the Oak of Mara. At that time, the area was inhabited by the Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I am going to give this land to your offspring. And Abraham built an altar there to commemorate the Lord's visit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm speaking tonight on what I've captioned in between the promise and the manifestation of the promise. In between the promise and the manifestation. Let me start by saying that without a doubt, without an equation, God is a promise keeper. Uh, you might be wondering, you might say, are you really sure? You're doubting. Because there have been many promises God has spoken to my heart. Maybe you're watching online. You said God has told you several things. But you're yet to see the manifestation of those things that God has spoken to your heart as an individual. Or through a prophetic word that was given through a servant of God. And maybe it has taken a while. And you're wondering, does God actually keep his promises? Friends, I want you to settle it in your heart that we serve a promise keeper. Hallelujah. If God says it, take it to the bank. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a promise keeper. Now, I understand that in the world we live in, men, women make promises that many a times they are not, in their heart they don't intend to keep that promise, but they make the promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I also understand that even as fathers or parents sometimes we make promises we are not willing from our heart to honor but we just make them because sometimes we have been put on the spot by our, at our children or our ward so we just make the promise so that at least we escape from that uh, being on the spot but friend our father is not like that God is not trying to impress you and I. 
when he makes a promise. We may fall to the category of trying to impress someone. We don't want to look bad in the eye of people. So sometimes when put on the spot, we can make a promise. Or maybe when we went, suddenly we went for a book launch or we went for something and everybody was, you know, making a vow and somehow because you don't want to be found as the only person there who did not make a vow. So because you want to look good in the eye of the crowd, you also what? Made a vow, but in your heart of hand, you know that you're not going to keep to that vow. You just want, you know, at least let that, uh, so that you're not put on the spot. Nobody wants to be put on the spot, myself included. I don't know about you. Maybe some of you like to be put on the spot. We only want to be put on the spot when it's a good thing. Okay? When we are celebrated. Am I right? Yes, because that time you, you're getting all the attention. So you like it. But if you're put on the spot... For something you have to produce sometime, nobody likes it. But I want to say that God will serve. It's not, it does not seek the attention of men. It does not. Now let me clarify that statement because I don't want you to misunderstand it. It does not look for the approval of men. So when he makes a promise, he intends to what? Fulfill that promise. God does not promise because he wants you to feel good. God makes a promise because why? He wants and he intends to fulfill every promise that what? He makes. There is also a situation or a scenario where someone makes a promise but is not capable to fulfill the promise. There are people in our lives, maybe I don't know about you, but there are people, you know people make a promise and in, in your heart of heart, you know that this promise the person is making, it does not have the capacity to what? To fulfill it. But it's not so with God. Romans 4, where we read in one of the verses, the Bible said, Abraham, he what? For he believed, he know that God was not just... Making the promise is what? Able. He is what? Able to fulfill the promise. To keep to his word. Friends, if you listen to the sound of my voice, whatever God has spoken to your heart at any point in time, I want you to know that God is capable not just capable is what more than able to make his word good in your life god is more than able to bring to the last dot of his word in your life if god has said it if you believe it it's good as done but we are talking about in between the promise and the manifestation. There is one thing for God to speak a word over your life. There is one thing for God to make a promise over your life. Because the Bible is full of promises. And many a times. We may not have a specific promise. As per God speaking to your heart to say. My son, and he can, he does it if you actually listen. He does it. But if in case you have not gotten to the point where you listen to God and God speak to you directly, God can speak to you directly from the Bible, from the Logos. Okay? All you need, all I need to do is to look out for the promises of God in this Logos and lay claim to it. If you lay claim to every promise God has said in this, in this Logos, it's as good as God also what? Speaking to, those, to you directly those promises. Because Jesus, the same word, 
yesterday today and for what forever mom what it meant is that the promises he made to abraham yesterday is the same promises he's making to you and i if we walk the same way abraham walked the same result that abraham saw in his life and generation we will also see those kind of manifestation but there is always there is always an in between there is always a gap between the promise and what the manifestation and many a times as heirs of the kingdom we fall to the trap when there is a gap when there's a way because see no matter who you are in the kingdom there will always be a gap between the promise and the manifestation between the time god stirs up your heart that you believe a promise in his word or god spoke to your heart directly by the inspired word of god to the manifestation there will be what a gap a time gap physically actually on the, on the plane although in the heavens is already what settled but a physical manifestation there will always be what a time gap and that is why many of us myself included sometime will miss it we miss it between the promise and what the manifestation between when we ask god to do something or we ask god in prayers about something between the time we prayed and the time we received the result physical result that's what we miss it so the question is why does god allow a time gap because if you understand the reason why god allows a time gap between his promise and the manifestation it will make life easy for you you align yourself with the program of god god does not make a promise because he wants you to feel good or he wants me to feel good or because he wants the approval of men god does not need any person's approval he doesn't in fact the bible lets us understand in hebrews 6 that when god was making the promises he made to abraham because there was none he did not find anyone greater than him he what he took an oath by himself and by his word two things he took an oath by himself because there was none found greater than him and by his word and bible said by two imitable things it is what impossible you know many a time in the human plane when you want to sometimes you want to guarantee a statement you're making you tend to you know uh, make that commitment with with an higher authority okay maybe le the legal person will make others understand better when they want things to be very concrete they say go to uh, court to get a, what a seal or a, a, a neutralize it even when we, you get your result maybe you went to school abroad some school demand that your transcript you go and notarize it in the court because they want to be sure that the, what you're sending is what the authentic one fortunately it's because of the way our, our country is yes it, because they are they are scared that you can send something that is not what authentic so the belief is that if you have the mind to go to the court to neutralize your result or your particulars business particulars or whatever it means it means you actually what mean business although even though we know sometimes these things can also can be doctored but in an ideal case what you're doing you're using a great authority to what to guarantee to certify the things you claim that you're presenting 
But in the case of God, the Bible says, because he did not find anyone greater than him, he swore by himself. He took an oath by himself when he was promising Abraham that he in blessing, I will what? Bless you. I will multiply you. So there is a gap between God's promises and his manifestation. And as believers, friends, I've looked at it. I've thought about it. I've studied and I said, God, why is there always a gap? Why don't I just step into the blessing the moment I see it, the moment I profess it, the moment I pray about it? Why don't I just step into the blessing? Why don't I just receive the physical manifestation? But it's simple because even in natural things, when we give birth to babies, we don't give birth to babies as big you know, full-grown men or full-grown women, right? We give birth to them like what? Infants. Then there's what? A phase of development. This is it the physical things explains what? Spiritual things. You might be wondering why is it that you're still struggling in some things believing God to receive those things that God has not given to you is because why there is the phase of the waiting phase is the phase God intends that we build capacity. I like us to open our Bible. It's a Bible study, so we're going to read a lot of reading. Deuteronomy chapter eight. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse two to seven. From 8, 2 to 7, I read, Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40 years, humbling you. Let's read with King James so that we can get it very well. King James, please. I like this, but let's read with King James. I'll still come back to this. Okay, let me continue with more. Humbling you and Testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you will really obey his commands. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people need more than bread for their life. Real life comes by feeding on every word of the Lord. For all these 40 years, your clothes did not wear out and your feet didn't blister or swear. swell. So you should realize that just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you to what? To help you. Let's, just as a parent's what? Disciplines what? A child. The Lord your God what? Also disciplines you to do what? To help me say to help me say to help me those of us who are parents without a doubt and any question in my heart i can 99.9.99999 percent say that we're all of our ch children am i right okay those of you who you have not gotten your own kids but you know you're a son or a daughter to someone you know that your parents love you am i right but does it stop them from disciplining you or does it stop you from disciplining your children when they go wrong it doesn't and why do you discipline them you do that because why you love them not because you in fact a parent who does not discipline their child Many a time does not know the importance of parenthood. Hallelujah. The Bible says God disciplines his own children because what? He wants to help them. Now, if you read the earlier account of Deuteronomy, I think chapter one, if I'm not making a mistake, it talked about 
it could have taken the Israelites 11 days 11 days to get to where God wants them to get to if he had taken them through another route but the Bible say it took them what 40 years I can't I can fathom 11 days to 40 years man it's not 40 days I can understand if you say that uh, uh, you know from 11 days it turned to 40 days I can understand but I can't wrap my head be behind the idea that something that was supposed to last for 11 days now lasted for what 40 years <laughs> if it's in project management that's that's a uh, that is uh, i don't know the kind of failure you're going to call the man a project that you're supposed to use 11 days you're using 11, uh, 40 years jesus that's almost the life of uh, uh, some people even jesus did not live up to 40 years but it, where we read the bible said the reason why god did that to what number one to what to humble them because although they were his children the israelite but most of them were rascals pardon me for my choice of word there was no character content in them there was no character content many and that is what we find many in the body of christ there are people who profess to be what christians i've given my life to jesus christ but there is no what character content in those professions and that is why many a times god it looks like delays the manifestation of his promise in the life of his sons and daughters because you see the blessing is not meant to kill you and i the blessing is meant to bless us and we in turn be a blessing to what to others but pardon me if god were to just release the blessing to our life the moment we get born again we may kill a lot of people because naturally man is greedy without jesus even with jesus greed is something you have to intentionally and consciously fight against so god allowed the israelites to go through the wilderness for 40 years rather than 11 days one to what to humble them to prove their character to prove what their character to prove that they love him that their faith is not just in the promise but is in the promise giver himself hallelujah because many a times we put our faith in the promise but forgetting that the promise is not bigger than the promise giver the promise giver is bigger than the promise itself and you see god wants a relationship between us as believers he doesn't want us to just profess that we are christians without what an intimate relationship with him and that is why many a time he allows us now listen god does not use evil to attempt his people but because of lust within us and god will need to allow some time on seemly circumstances to try us to try the content of our heart now god already knows the content of our own heart but he said he wants to use that to prove to us ourselves for we to know the content of our own our own art what because you see the bible says if your strength fail you in the days of what adversity your strength is what small so what it simply means is that adversity comes to everybody 
God allows adversity to come so that you know what strength, what you have made of. You will see without nobody telling you. Adversity brings out the best in you and me. So although God has given a word of promise to you and I, we will not as experience the manifestation if we are not willing to go through the making process the making process is more important to God than the promise itself because see God guarantees that his word comes to pass but see when that word comes to pass how will it meet us Will the promise of God meet you and I half baked or well baked? Many a times we don't understand that when God allow situations to come to us, to when we are faced with difficult situations, God is expecting that we use those moments to build spiritual capacity, to build character. Hallelujah. To refine our character to refine what our character because left alone to ourselves we will not work on ourselves many a times a situation tough times that allows us to work on ourselves that's just how life is If everything sometimes is going smoothly, you may not even sit down to give a thought for anything. But when sometimes things are a little bit difficult, you sit down and you crack your head and you think. Let me go to my note because of time's sake. God's promises are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Because between God's promises and his manifestation, in the life of the believer is a whole journey and different kettle of fish. His promises are sure as day and night. But between the promises and the manifestation is a big journey. And the journey is different from every one of us. Some people take a longer journey to get there. Some people take a shorter journey. It all depends on what they do with their lives during those journey how you work on yourself what god is let me tell you one of the biggest thing god want to accomplish in our life is discipline a disciplined man is someone who god can use I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in the sense of because see, when you're not disciplined anything goes for you and forgive me a lot of believers who are not disciplined and friends when you're not even disciplined it affects every area of your life even your work at your workplace it affects you because if you're not disciplined some things you can't expect it of you can it can perform because you're not disciplined. God wants you and I to be disciplined. To have content. To have character. Every promise of God for your life will require patience. Persistence. And perseverance in faith of the recipient of the promise. Every promise that God speaks over your life or will ever speak over your life, inspire your heart to believe for, it will require what? Patience, persistence, perseverance. Without these things, you will never see the promise of God in your life, even though you profess it. I don't know about you, there are things in my life that God has spoken to me, I believe, long, long years back. But that they are still yet to be manifested because why? God still, there are things God expects me to do that I have not yet done. 
If those, if the blessing coming to kill me, no promise of God is without a journey to His manifestation in the life of the recipient of the blessing. No, no, there's no promise that God make to you and I that is without a journey. You must go through a journey. There must be an in between between the promise and the manifestation. And what God is looking out for is that during that in between the manifestation and the promise, you build character, you build humility, you build patience, perseverance, endurance. Because these, these attributes are needed for living. It's not just for spiritual matters alone. You want to get married, you need big patience. Some of us who are praying, God, give me patience. And we have not yet still learned the lesson that some of the difficult siblings that God gave to us was to teach us patience. Some of the difficult bosses God gave to us at our place of work was that we may, that we may have what? Patience. Because why? The, the spouse that God is bringing to you, you will need that patience. That, that believers are not expected to divorce is not just because God said he ate divorce. If you have not built patience in you, you might speak all the tongues, you might, you might divorce your wife or your spouse or your husband within one month. Even though you're a believer. Even though you believe that verse that say God said he what? It's what? Divorce. Because in this scheme of things, love is not just emotion. Love is actually decision. Hello? Love is what? Decision. That you say you want to love someone for the rest of your life on this side of planet Earth is that you're making a decision to live with the consequences of that your decision. Many of us take decisions but we're, we're not willing to live what with the consequences of a decision so the reason why many believers are also joining the the rat race of divorce is because the time god was teaching them patience they were not what learning it god was teaching them endurance long suffering they were not learning it now they get married and unfortunately they get married to an impatient spouse so what do you do is every time you get in, uh, uh, you know you get offended by your spouse you say you're not marrying again <laughs> because there will be many of many times your spouse will offend you and many times you too will offend your spouse many times but you see is the discipline that you have built over time that makes you to know that love is what a decision and beyond feeling there's feeling part of it but the major part of love is what decision i'm loving you in the midst of your flaws i make a decision to what to love you in the midst of your shortcomings i make a what decision to what to love you in the midst of your impatience i make a decision to what to love you that's that's love that's discipline that's what discipline so God expects us that we build character. My time is running, so I'm going to be a little bit fast now. Many professed believers only desires, wish, and even claims and professes the promises of God over their life without coming to terms 
with the truth that there is a journey between the promises of God and his manifestations in our life. Even me, sometimes I uh, fall into that category in some areas of my life. You wish, you profess the promises of God, you believe it, you claim it, but between the claiming and it being manifested in your life, <laughs> there's a big gap. That you said, I claim the promises of God, doesn't just, it doesn't just begin to manifest. You will have to go through the waiting period. And the waiting period is what God uses to build character in you and I. But many of us lose it. Many of us don't understand the workings of God. The program of God. We complain. We murmur. Rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us. To build character. To build discipline in us. We murmur when we are waiting for the blessings of God. The promises of God in our life. We murmur. And we waste the time. Hence, most believers live in frustration and disappointment because of the seemingly waiting period for the manifestation of the promises of God. Even me sometimes. What are the things in your life you wish God has done all this while? The question is, what were the lessons you are supposed to learn that God expected you to learn that you have not learned yet? In principle, God, you see, once, once you have faith on something, God cannot ignore faith. Faith is the currency of the spirit in the kingdom. When God senses faith from you, no matter how small it is, God cannot what? Ignore it. But there must be a proving of your faith. Now, if you, if you read about the account of that man that was paralyzed that the friends took to Jesus, the Bible said there was crowd they couldn't gain access to where Jesus was and they what? They climbed over the roof of the house where he was and removed the, the roof and then lowered their friend into the presence of Jesus that's faith now they have faith that Jesus was able to heal him. But there was an impediment between them and Jesus, the people. Not, not wanting to take no for an answer, their faith propelled them to do the impossible. Do you think the man who owned the roof will just keep quiet? They must have negotiated that don't worry at the end of the day we're going to fix your roof back you know when we read the bible we just take it face value no it's like someone coming to my house and the roofing the roofing the, my my building because the person want to see the person inside my house oh boy <laughs> it's not going to be easy oh. but i'm just imagining what they went through trying to convince the owner of the house that don't worry sir we will put it on our account faith will make you take steps that sometimes it may not it may not make sense to the person who is looking at you but you see if your faith is built on the word of God God will honor it it might take a while but God will honor it. Because why? God honors faith that is built on his world. The journey that is what can be called the process of making and what? Maturity. The journey between the promise and the manifestation is what is called the, the process of what? Making and maturity. God uses that gap in between his promise and his manifestation to make you and I, to bring us into sonship, to mature us. Because left to ourselves, we will do damage to, to ourselves first, of course, 
and also to the body of Christ. Imagine everybody who get born again because you can speak in tongues just going to being a pastor. <laughs> there will be a lot of trouble. There will be a lot of trouble. You know, many, many years ago I was... I, sometimes when I sit back, I just thank God. I say, God, thank you for not allowing me to be a pastor since 1999. Because when we got born again in 1992, there was a lot of zeal. In fact, people will be telling you this one: you, you are already a pastor, you know. And you know, people will be the one prophesying to your own destiny before you even see your own. They prophesy to you, and they even wished. You had gone to Bible school, you know. I, I remember one encounter I had when I was in school. My mom really wanted me to leave school and go to Bible school. God bless her heart. Because of course, well, to her understanding, she saw the hand of God upon my life. She wanted me to go to school, to, you know, go to Bible school to gain knowledge and all the rest. But somehow I just feel, I just felt that it's not a timing. Now, I'm not saying that because I didn't go that others who went is bad. No, I'm not saying. I'm just saying that you have to, don't allow yourself to be pushed. It doesn't matter who is saying what. Ultimately, you have to settle whatever you do with your destiny with God by yourself. The intentions were excellent, were noble. But I just know with deep within me that it's not the timing. Well, I, I could have also, also be a good pastor from that time. My mom wanted me to go and go to Bible school till now. But there could be, there would be, I'm definitely sure there would be a lot of errors I would have made. A lot, because why? The lot I didn't know then, back in 1999. Even much more earlier than 1999. So, God, when he looks as if there's a delay in your life, it's not just necessarily a delay. There is a lesson God wants you and I to what? To learn. I'll just say one thing then we wrap up because of time. Why does God insist on the process of making and maturing man maturity before the manifestation of the promise? Number one, God want to build and ensure the formation of the character of Christ within you. You see, there's nothing difficult for God, for God to just make his, his promises being manifested in your life and in my life. But without the character of Christ forming you and I, we will use the blessing of God to kill ourselves. Let me wrap up by saying, I incidentally watch a nigerian movie one of these uh, past week i can a few days ago i think so i guess and the movie was uh, there was this lady who her parents had died when she was young and she was just living from rags to you know rags to rags nothing like rags to grace rags to rags eating from god you know that kind of stuff and somehow she got in contact with this rich woman i think her daughter jammed her while driving something like that and i didn't really follow the whole story but the, the whole story was that what i caught from the place i watched this lady eventually adopted this poor girl adopted her unfortunately okay even the girl that jammed her was also adopted by this rich lady then she she got into wealth. Then she made it a life assignment to pay back all the people who were mean to her when she was a poor person. Imagine. Now she's into money. Rather than be grateful to God, she wanted to what? Pay back all the people, whether small or big, that ever did her bad when she was poor. Is it because the human nature is wicked? Even to the point where 
a former boyfriend who was a, a an agbelo begin to put thoughts in her hand that this woman you better know this woman they will kick you out very soon oh. and long story short she planned to kill the woman the woman who adopted her now that is that's to tell you that wickedness in the heart of man is is really is really strong only god can help you and i if we allow ourselves to be disciplined by him and that's how some of us even though we're believers because we have not allowed ourselves to be disciplined by our, the holy spirit when god put blessing in our hand we want to oppress everybody and that's why god can bless us now because rather than the blessing to be a blessing to someone we will use it to what to punish someone and that's not god's intention so the reason why god delays the process is because why he wants the character of what christ to be what form in us because at the end of the day if we're his disciples we're all to what act like him let's bow yes between the promise and the manifestation what are the things god has promised you i want to tell you that god is able more than able to fulfill his promise god is more than able to fulfill his promise in your life in my life but the question is not about god fulfilling his promise the question is are you ready am i ready to receive that promise what will we do with that promise of god in our life what will you do with the lifting that god you're asking god to lift you you're asking god to change your story when god changes your story what will become of you will your life still be an example of the believer will you and i still be humble can people still approach us those are the questions we need to ask ourselves perseverance patience persistence faith is what god expects of us pray that god will help you to build character to build patience that seemingly difficult situation you may be going through is an opportunity for you to build patience an opportunity to build character to learn something ask god to teach you what he wants you to learn in that difficult situation with that difficult boss In Jesus precious name we have prayed father we thank you this evening for your word thank you for sending your word to our hearts Lord we give it a praise we thank you for the understanding of your word tonight we ask for the enabling grace to be the doers of this word that we have received tonight we receive grace to do your word we ask that Lord you will strengthen your servants grant him deeper and insight onto your counsel and you will strengthen him on every area thank you precious father tonight for giving answers to prayers for jesus precious name we have prayed Amen. thank you god servant more, more grace and strength in god and his word in jesus name before we go tonight i'd like us to just give our offering to the lord let's worship God with our substance. If you are giving physically, please ushers, you can go around and just minister to us. If you want to give via the uh, online platform, the detail is on the screen. If you want to give via the envelope, please ushers, you can just minister to us as we listen to the following announcements.
Pastor Richard Adekola still remains the duty pastor for this week. Please, let's get across to Pastor Richard in good time. You have testimony that you want to, to share to encourage others. Please get in touch with Pastor Richard. You have a special ministration. Let him know in good time. Also, we'll encourage, let's share our testimony so that others will be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This Saturday, we'll be converging on the Zoom platform to pray together at the Prevailers Place, 6.30 a.m. Please, we challenge us. Let's log on 6.30 a.m. on Saturday. Let's pray together. Let's maximize the power of corporate prayer under God. Please, while you are in your room, you are in the city room, you are on the bed, you can join us and we pray together. If you have prayer points, you can send to any of us. We are not going to be mentioning your name. Yes, this one, this one, but God will help us to be able to fashion the prayer points so that others can also pray for you together. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for the giving of your sons and daughters. We glorify your name. Lord, we ask that you will accept her offering and her givings tonight. We ask for the release of your blessing upon our lives, even beyond our imagination. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Let's rise to our feet as we close the service tonight. Let's remember Kingdom Life Service this Sunday. We trust God that our pastor will be around. We trust God that he will be around. Pastor will be around on Sunday. So let's invite others, not, not because he will be around, but we are telling you that by, by the grace of God, God's servant will be around in our midst on Sunday. Let's invite others. Let's tell other people. Let's bring friends and associates to, to receive the blessing in his presence. Let's take the benediction together. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 20 to 21. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 20 to 21. One, two, go. Now may the God of peace that great shepherd of the sheep make me complete in every good work to do his will working in me what he were placing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.